it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this pleasant function organized this morning to inaugurate a new state of art facility that has been created for the SIS Indian Institute of Environment Management and the SIS School of Packaging Packaging Technology Center to further augment both the educational and the research resources and capabilities of both these institutions and emerge as national institutions in these basic sciences. Over two decades ago, when these institutions were formed and housed in the Nehru Academic Campus of the Society, nestled in between the Asil and the Basil of a vibrant campus which is bursting with seams, a need was felt to provide a more conducive environment for higher applications in technology and in research. And that has given rise to this new institution for both these institutions. This is indeed a special year that we are concluding the Navati celebrations, the 90 years of the South Indian Education Society in its journey through times in the universalization of education. The saga of success, the tribulations, the peaks and the troughs that this institution has witnessed in its long journey today is climaxing into educational facilities, infrastructure and educational delivery programs which are compatible to the needs of the student community, meet the aspirations of the community and more importantly address the contemporary needs of time while embracing technology. The SIA School of Packaging, Packaging Technology Center was started in the year 2001 to bridge the gap between academic and research and training in the field of packaging. The school was formed with the motto, better living through better packaging. True to the motto that was adopted by the school, the educational offerings of the institution both at the graduate and the postgraduate level have been such that they have been recognized with the World Packaging Organization and the qualification post-graduation is not only India-centric as far as the job potential is concerned but it is pan-global. Both these institutions and for the matter even the society has been recognized as a scientific research organization by the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research DSIR of the Government of India. SIS is one of the very few institutions in the country which enjoys a weighted deduction for contribution to scientific research under Section 3512 of the Income Tax Act 1961. The SIS SOP Star Awards, which is now into its seventh edition, has over these years attracted small, medium, and large scale industries and packaging converters to showcase their innovation and research in the field of packaging so as to emerge as the darling of the consumer. It is a very significant step that the school had taken to promote innovation in packaging. The various areas that are the hallmark of the assessment and the evaluation under the STAR Awards basically are in relation to aesthetics, the design, the choices, the material, the eco-sustainability and environmental degradation of the material itself which is used in packaging, the sustenance of the main product through the life cycle of the product, its perishability as the focus, more importantly cost containment and at last to ensure that the product has least carbon footprint as well the least carbon footprint for the packaging itself, more importantly to dictate the consumer behavior as to shift the product from the shelf to the basket. So this has been the mission that the school has been pursuing over these years. It was the vision, the dream and the mission of the founder director of SIA School of Packaging, Professor P. V. Narayanan, to increase the footprint of the activities of this institution far beyond the borders of this country. And that took him to the institutional membership of the International Association for Packaging Research Institutions, headquartered now presently in USA, 
which moved away from UK to over there. It was also his dream and effort to see that the biannual members conference of IPRI comes to India for the first time. In the 52nd year of its institutional journey, this in international institution comprising of all developed nations across the globe in the seven continents, at last in its 31st membership conference comes to India. It's a strange irony that the architect of the entire effort is no longer with us. At the peak of the pandemic, he got infected with the virus and succumbed to the virus and moved away from the scene to the unseen. Today, as IPRI holds its 31st biannual members conference in just two days from now, it's a tribute to this outstanding packaging professional that this country had ever seen post-independence. We still believe that his spirit endures and the values that he cherished shall continue to guide us and he shall inspire us in the journey ahead. The SIS Indian Institute of Enron Management was started in the year 1999 to provide education and research in the field of environment management and biotechnology. Over the last two decades, the institution has partnered every major scientific institution in the country, be it DST, be it DBT, be it ICMR, IGIDR, be it the pollution control boards across the country, MOE of the Ministry of Environment Forest, and brought about significant uh, research publications for all these institutions in this two decade, more than two decade journey of this institution. The SIES IAEM basically drives its activities in the fields of total water management, environment management of course, applied biotechnology, climate change adaptation particularly in relation to agriculture, and eco-sustainability, sustainable development with focus on livelihood. The range of the activities of the SIS IAEM can't be contained in an address like this. But suffice if I were to travel a bit on what were the major activities that were completed the last year, you will have enough evidence and window to know as to how imminent this institution can grow in the years ahead. Last year, on behalf of DST, the SIS IAEM conducted climate change adaptation studies in relation to onion growth in the taluks of Nipad and Sinar in the Nasik district of Maharashtra, the two largest onion growing centers in the country. More than 300 onion growing farmers mainly were connected to the WhatsApp grid of SIES IAEM so as to address their day-to-day -day issues when the studies on climate change in relation to onion production was being carried out. The results are there for everyone to see. From a period of scarcity to a period of glut is evident. But then glut also brings along with it an economic distress to the farmer. But not just the quantity, but the quality of onion production in Maharashtra improved substantially, opening the gateway for internationalization of commerce. With the result, export of onion trade has also started and there is a higher realization coming from exports to balance the lower realization from excessive supply that we have in the onion market. Last year, IIM also carried out on behalf of the state government and the Maharashtra Pollution Control Board, biomonitoring and indexation of 56 major rivers in rural interland of Maharashtra through 156 centrally monitored water quality stations in the country. The project was completed in due time, paving the way for substantial benefit to the state government in understanding the revival of water bodies across the state which have been sunk and demolished 
demised by the polluents which had gone into the water streams maharashtra is one of the most progressive states as far as irrigation is concerned the jalyukt shivir abhiyan which was started by this state just about 8 9 years before with the only focus of water for all in the state of course and uh, to move scarcity areas from perennial drought situations if not to water abundance to water minimum requirements for living such is the success of the jalush jalush the shivir abhiyan that the present government has started the second edition of the abhiyan the government will do well we will of course make representation to them to expand the bio monitoring of the rivers beyond these 56 rivers to the rest of rivers in maharashtra so that the water bodies will revive themselves and help the state rejuvenate the lands and generate produce that will fill the stomachs not only of this country but across the globe like ukraine does to the world as far as grain production is concerned the work of the sis iaem in the field of climate change is to be seen to be believed in the early years in 2004 2000 even earlier than that as soon as we started this was taken as one of the key result areas for the institution such is the profound nature of work of sis iaem in the field of climate change when the intergovernmental panel for climate change geneva secured the nobel prize in the year 2007 for peace without any hesitation symbolically the nobel certificate was endorsed in favor of the director of the sis indian institute of environment management with a long letter saying that such eminence would not have come to the intergovernmental panel geneva but for the pioneering contribution of sis iaem as i stand before you memories of professor p n purushottam kanna come before me he was a visionary head of his time such was his eminence in environment and applied areas that when the rio conference came in the year 1992 it was headed by the then prime minister manmohan singh and the deputy leader the chief of technical fell onto the shoulders of professor purushottam kanna the world knows that rio conference is the turning point the 360 degrees change as far as sensitization to environment is concerned in the world and that was the greatness of professor kanna but it is sad that at the peak of his career when we were engaged in such serious projects which would have made sis iaem today one of the largest research centers in the world for environment and a multi billion dollar institution in fact the studies that were conducted on hydrogen as a substitute for fuel started in 2000 and the work was so rapid that there are so many takers for the project at the stage at which we were in but we refused to give in saying that we will conclude and then come back but then unfortunately professor kanna was no more and we never got any one of his equivalents to carry on that show which today is engaging the attention of the entire world therefore on a joint occasion like this and then there was another thing cantothecin cantothecin is the most effective drug of choice for malaria this would have been the gift of this institution to the african continent where malaria was rampant such was the impact of the initial study that we had done and given across unfortunately it didn't survive to get it to the stage for being given across to the world we remember him with reverence and regard in as much as we remember professor uh, narayanan with admiration and awe 
for these two outstanding professionals of our time on this joyous occasion when we are inaugurating yet another facility of SIES. I should go back to tell you that in the year 2018, the society decided on the way forward for the institution. So there were two missions that were identified. Mission 2025, which is a period of seven years, starting from 2018. And the second phase, mission 2032, from 2025 to 2032, the year in which the science will be celebrating the centenary of its eternal journey in bliss in the course of education. The key result areas of Mission 2025 was to create 25 SIS higher educational institutions to move the student population from 25,000 to 50,000 and through quantity and quality emerge not as a big, not even as the best of academic institutions but as one of the most admired academic institutions in the country and even beyond. We were beset with so many problems during this period. The corona pandemic put paid to human efforts during this period for a substantially long time of more than two years. Despite the clock shifting behind, I have great pleasure in telling you that all the projects of Mission 2025 are on course and they will be hitting the light of the day one year ahead of time. So much before the end of this year, 2023, several other institutions across this area would have been inaugurated and they would start functioning during this year itself when some more institutions will come next, next year. It is at this crucial juncture in the history of this institution that I have great pleasure in announcing to you as a tribute to Professor Purushottam Kanna, yet another star in the horizon of SIES, Professor Purushottam Kanna, Center for Environment Audit, yeah, Environment Rating and Audit, SISCRA, PKCRA, which is the abbreviation that has been given now, will, the, will be the beginning of a journey that we should have concluded in the year 2004. I would like to tell you in the year 2004, ICICI came running to us and Chrysler said they would like to join us in setting up a foundation for environment audit and rating and they had sent across a draft MOU saying that change whatever you want but sign and give it to us. It's yours and we are your partners. Chrysler will do it. But unfortunately, it took me one minute to tell them that I can never deal with you because Chrysler is a stock exchange listed company whose objective is to enhance the wealth of its shareholders and SIES is a charitable institution. No listed company can ever think in terms of diverting its resources, hard earned economic wealth for activities other than its stakeholders. And therefore, it didn't see the light of the day. Professor Kanna regretted and he wanted that we should start on our own. But then I felt that the time has not come and India itself has not taken the idea in 2002 that we should start this institution. Unlike the rating agencies like Chrysler, ICRA, CARE, which are financial rating agencies, which essentially address on the solvency of the project in relation to securing the safety of the investments of the investors into the project. Environmental audit goes far, far beyond that. It is far, far beyond the impact assessment studies on environment which are done for large industries which is mandatory for approval. It is far beyond that. Environmental audit in the true sense of the term, the first of it came in the year 1998 when Telco demonstrated to the world as to what are the gold standards 
of an undertaking as large as not all telco tesco as large as tesco in jamshedpur that was the inspiration for us to do things and the working paper that professor karna brought out i can tell you without any doubt across the globe wherever you present that paper you will find that it is the most original paper on environment rating i in fact added religiosity to that paper by bringing in color codes and saying that there are religions in this country which look at these color codes and decide on investments the red code is a taboo for that religion to ever invest in the project yellow gives the right of choice to the investor green gives him a blanket thing to go ahead and do that so this rating that we are looking at is essentially in relation to the destruction to the ecology the carbon footprint that the product were to give as a result of the manufacturing process that are going in and far beyond that into cleaner technologies and processes as would achieve lower carbon footprint and ease of manufacturing and productivity as a key economies can never survive without ecology and therefore sooner or later you will find that the government of the day would also make environment audit compulsory under the indian companies act 2013 like the financial audit so we are starting ahead of time to believe that an environment audit in the true sense of the term covering wide areas that you would have listed over there including certifications for eco sensitive buildings building materials construction water streams water quality management all will be addressed in the evaluation the parameters for which we shall lay down based on what we gave 20 years ago again they are about to celebrate commence the silver jubilee of sies iiem as the fall comes for this year they would start their silver jubilee there can be no greater gift to sies iiem not just this infrastructure building mortar and clay that we can give we have to create minds which will travel the mission forward and if minds have to be created they are not born they have to be developed so professor purushottam kanna environment awareness programs will be started in various schools across the city to begin with targeting students of the 6th to the 8th standard we have some difficulty on the nep because the nep has a break point in the 8th standard examinations may come but i'm giving you a primitive thought that targeting students the 6th to 8th standard through not only sensitizing them to the environment addressing issues on jalameva jeevanam water as an elixir of life and how to protect it and on air pollution like fire crackers that go across war on tobacco that will minimize air pollution transportation models that the children should practice so that the carbon footprint plus the pollution that we are seeing across choking life in cities like delhi and mumbai can be minimized what cannot be taught at 5 can never be taught at 50 so a beginning is being made in memory of this visionary at least 25 schools will be covered during this year covering 1000 students who will become the ambassadors for carrying forward the mission of ecology and environment in the years ahead and if this program is sustained for a decade you will have an army in the city of mumbai of young minds who will grow to become the greatest champions of environment that would be the lasting tribute that can never be paid to sis iiem or to even professor purushottam kanna this institution of ours which has seen the light of the day today has been constructed at a cost of 40 crores of rupees excluding instruments equipments apparatus all which have been transferred from the existing institutions in nerul that they have come over here but in creating this brick and mortar institution 
we have learnt many a lessons. The lessons are, if they can generate more minds that can work on the vision of this institution, then the purpose of investment, staking a society's money, which is again the public money, would be better put to use by the results that we shall show, both in the field of packaging and in the field of environment as we travel along. In my school days, I used to wonder when the English teacher used to speak on Rudyard Kipling when he said, far from the madding crowd and yet be within it. I used to wonder what is it that my teacher is trying to convey. Slowly but surely when he unfolded what Kipling meant, then I realized that in this institutional journey of ours, we have seen several people who have been like us, as ordinary like you and me, but far from this madding crowd. They made the difference remaining within us. And that is the reason why in the 90 years of history of this institution, several of my predecessors had made such outstanding contribution to the city that education thrives in this city. But we also had an occasion to experience our much Mr. Sundarajan will go to the background and say, no, 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 not for me. I should say, he joins the band of people far from the magic crowd and yet be within it. At the ripe age of 86, there are better things to do in life. The call of the master to the world of the yonder will ensure that you address more peaceful time to mind, body and soul. But unrelenting as he is, even at this age, he has been supervising. I don't know. I am good at creating ideas and I walk away from the ideas. But to translate those ideas into action requires men on the ground. Several people have been inspired by him to work and get these institutions around. To imagine getting four or five institutions in one single year is a task by itself. I can sit down and tell the timelines have not been met. And I can frown, Amol is sitting there. I can frown at him also and say, Amol, you have let us down. But heart of what I know, building institutions is a process by itself. And I should tell you, a living memory of this edifice is a contribution of Mr. Sundarajan. And of course there are enough. All these people, I am not excluding anyone over here who had given their hand to him. Because if he had got into it and these people had not supported, we would not have seen the light of the day. So I should tell you that when you look at this building, remember this gentleman. And when you come and look at some more buildings which will come, at this age one man can uh, monitor so many projects. Of course we have project management consultants, of course we have architects who are there. And half architects like us, who have built several institutions coming in between and disturbing the rhythm and the flow of the construction that happens. Because I am known for that come one day before and disturb everything. And send their blood pressure up. But in spite of all these oddities, these projects are seeing the light of the day because of such members who have been part of this exciting journey called as SIES. As I come to the end of my address this morning, I invite you all to join this exciting journey of educating the burgeoning young population of this nation. At this juncture, India is the most populous nation on the earth. If you ask an economist, he will say, expanding, exploding, burgeoning population is a drag on the economy the law of diminishing returns will come because available resources will have claim from several mouths. But as far as India is concerned, 1.42 billion people is 1.42 billion opportunities. Unlike nations across the world, this is the only nation whose demographic profile and the age profile is astounding. 50% of the population, more than 50% of the population, is below the age of 25. More than 65% of the population is below the age of 35. 
it is this youthful energy of this country that will drive this nation ahead it is again india's human capital is a force to reckon with in the amrit kal period as our prime minister said between 2022 to 2047 when india would celebrate the centenary of its independence let us all strain every sinew leave no stone unturned exert ourselves to take this nation to its rightful place amongst the committee of nations emerge it as one of the most dominant economic powerhouses in the world and more importantly as one of the most admired nation in this planet earth economy ecology is fine but admiration is required and lastly 20th of may rings differently for a different people ask sima mishra she will tell you it is mythology day and he has some more days to give and they have some more days on 20th of may we didn't choose this day for any reason except to say that the delegates of ipri have to come here after the seminar is over to spend some time over here and therefore it has to be inaugurated before that but to, to this institution particularly our academic institution in nerul all of them the presiding dt is the sage of kanchi that's why the campus itself is named after chandrashekhar indra saraswati this is the very day 130 years before he came onto this earth it's a tribute to this spiritual colossal this master of masters this lambian light who rekindled the nation and uh, brought out a renaissance in many a field of religion thought and process and taught mankind to groping in the dark despite all these strides in science and technology as to how to journey to a higher destiny and attain atma swaraj the freedom of the mind on this very day when he came on to this earth to influence people in this part of the world we have one more facility that is created i am sure his blessings will endure and this institution that sees the light of the day today will be guided blessed by his goodness and his spiritual influence to achieve all that we have set for ourselves not only in the near term but in the years ahead thank you and god bless